Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Mr. B.I. Tech Podcast. Today we're going to do something a little bit different than my other videos. Um, I've kind of been feeling a little nostalgic lately and I've decided to see if you guys would like uh, videos like this one where um, I can go through and look up uh, ed technology or education technology that I grew up with or um, things that I remember in the classroom, maybe you guys do too. So um, for the inaugural episode of this, I decided that uh, one of the things that I remembered uh, best from you know, I guess my childhood in a school, um, even outside of school, I remember playing this at my uh, grandma and grandpa's house a long time ago on their old Apple II, um, was the Oregon Trail. And one of the things that I hope to kind of do in this episode is kind of take a look at this and see, number one, um, is it still relevant? Is this something that kids can still learn from today? And is it a useful tool that you could put in the classroom? And number two, we'll kind of uh, have a run through of the game and kind of see what are some of the benefits and, you know, what is it like to go through the game on here. Um, one of the things I'll mention before this is that I do actually own um, an Apple Macintosh LC2. Um, this was uh, generously donated to me by another colleague that I worked with um, a while back, so I thank you uh, again for that. Um, it was working when he gave it to me, and I swear I didn't do anything to it. But with older technology, as things do, um, it kind of breaks down. So... Uh, you know, one of the things that I didn't think about when moving in is to make sure that the uh, hard disk drive didn't go. And it looks like that the hard disk drive, uh, the big bulky thing that it was, had finally given out. So um, right now it's currently not working. So I wasn't able to do this video as I originally planned to play it on the old Macintosh LC2 um, that we used to have in our school. I, <laughs> you know, it's one of those nostalgic things that I had. So um, before I ran on too much... Um, I ended up getting uh, an online version of this uh, through archive.org, and archive.org is a very useful uh, place to find all this abandoned wear, um, basically old computer technology that is no longer supported by the manufacturers, and uh, really that no one would ever find again. And they actually have the Oregon Trail um, available to play online, so this will work on even a modern device such as a Chromebook. So the fact that it can work doesn't necessarily mean that it's something you should use in the classroom. So I'm going to go ahead and play through this here and you're welcome to watch along or you can kind of skip ahead to the end if you know the game or if you want to feel nostalgic for a little bit like I did. I had a lot of fun playing this game. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Oregon Trail. All right, so I'm on my emulation website here, archive.org, and I've just launched the DOS emulator here. Uh, the MECC logo. Remember that a lot as a child myself. All right, so you're booted up to the main screen of the Oregon Trail, and um, you have to select everything through the keyboard it's because there's no mouse controls back in this time. And I'm going to go ahead and choose to be a carpenter because that's probably going to uh, be a little bit easier. Let's throw in some names here. All right, and I always had the best luck uh, heading out in April. March was really too cold and there would be a blizzard, so I'm going to get a broken arm or whatever. So um, I need to buy supplies before I head out. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and just skip forward through this. Uh, I have eight oxen, uh, I bought a whole bunch of food, at least two sets of clothing for each person, at least one spare part, and I am ready to head out. That music. And the old PC beeper speaker. All right. So you can get a look at the map uh, at any point in time, which is a fairly accurate rendering of the western Midwest United States. And then you're ready to go. And this is the scene that probably a lot of people who played. Uh, the Oregon Trail, remember, is the ox and the cart heading down the plains with on their recent destination or the most closest destination. Oh, I found a wagon tongue. Um, the closest destination coming in. And whenever you look around, there's a different song per location. So, let's go ahead and Across the river here uh, gives you some river conditions now I always recommend whenever there's a toll or a ferry take it um, you know yeah no matter what the cost uh, just make sure you have some money to do it wait the four days 
uh, because if you don't, you're probably going to end up killing someone. Um, that's just always seems to be the case, uh, at least that I remember from the Oregon Trail. And then see it through the animation, I made it across safely by paying the toll. So now we're off to our next destination, and we'll just take a look around here one more time uh, before we start looking around at our supplies. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at our map, and you can kind of see we've made a little bit of progress. I'm going to continue on to the trail. Ah, but first I'm going to have to, okay, now this one doesn't give me an option to um, take a ferry, so I'm going to try to ford the river. Let's see what happens here. This is why I always recommend taking a toll when it's available. Yep, there we go. Oh, no one died. I only lost a wagon wheel, 80 pounds of food, and two oxen. So. Not too bad. Um, I've definitely seen a lot worse. But now if you'll take a look, I'm out of food. So I'm going to have to do some hunting. And this is probably the most fun part that people remember uh, from back in the day. You have to use the number pad or the arrow pad to point and shoot. Now, gosh, I'm in a bad location here. Oh, that deer would have been nice. Let's see if anything else comes out. Oh, buffalo. Oh, I got cheated. Yeah, now I can't hit that deer because I keep hitting the squirrel. Poor squirrel, I've shot him like four times now. Oh, another buffalo. There we go, got him. All right. Yep, 977 pounds of meat. Unfortunately, I'm only able to carry 100 pounds back at a time. So, unfortunately, um, I'll probably have to hunt many more times. Oh, one of the oxen is injured. And that usually happens from lack of rest. And so, so far, this is... Right, so after Fort Kearney, let's go ahead and uh, fast forward the game a little bit here. Um, oops, so let's, let's, before we do that, let's uh, take a look here. I need to replace the two oxen that drowned, buy some food. That way I'm not hunting every five minutes. So far, I'd have to say this is a very fairly accurate simulation um, for the Oregon Trail, even to this day. And this is coming as a history teacher um, rather than a tech professional. So let's go ahead and fast forward now. And now you can see later on in the game, it becomes much more difficult to get around. Um, you'll see almost every day there's some sort of ailment going around. You know, ox wanders off, lose a day, rough grass, little water, uh, dysentery, DOS has cholera. So... <laughs> I mean, just all the stuff in here. And I've actually cut out all the times that I had to go hunting in between there. Almost every day we're eating through 15 pounds of food. Rem remarkably, everyone in my party is still alive. So um, I decided to take the shortcut at this point to the Dallas because I've been playing this game for about 30 minutes so far. Um, I had to fast forward just a little bit so you guys wouldn't be sitting there watching this the whole time. But take a look at my food meter every time something happens. I mean, it is crazy. And then the game starts handing out freebies, like, oh, they help you find fruit. I think I cut it out, but there was a point when, yep, that is lost. Uh, there was a point where the Indians helped me find food, which was very much appreciated. I didn't have to go hunting one more time. All right, so now I'm actually um, not going to take my own advice here in a second. Um, but as you can see, my supplies are still fairly steady. I usually say take the toll no matter what, but since I never have, I'm gonna go ahead and take the Columbia River. Um, and this will be my first time ever floating down the Columbia River. I think I did it once um, when I was in the fifth grade and regretted it, and so every time I've ever played this game since, I ended up uh, taking the toll road. So the controls here are actually very slippery. Um, oh, see, so I almost hit a rock there. Um, but you have to press the arrow to move and then press the opposite arrow to stop moving. And I didn't get that um, until, unfortunately it was too late, I actually made a mistake uh, coming up here in a little bit as I try to avoid a rock. Um, but, you know, overall it's definitely ups the difficulty here. So right now I didn't realize I had to stop him. Yep, I lost three people. I am almost towards the end of the game. Everyone was alive. I killed four oxen, 
three people, Apple, Bit, and DOS all bit the dust. And unfortunately, because of that. So there's the first directional arrow. I almost hit that other rock there. There's the first directional arrow, and I'm going to fast forward. Here's the second directional arrow. Uh, at this point, I've probably been playing this for about two minutes. And then about another two minutes later, we'll see the third directional arrow. So now I have figured, okay, I see the directional arrow. It's probably time to hit the shore. Unfortunately, that didn't work. I lost more things. So maybe I have to hit the other shore. Let's go over there. Let's not go too quickly. Huh. What you have to do is you have to wait for those squiggly lines, and I didn't know this, so finally, there we go. Gosh, look at that. I finally made it to Oregon. Let's see how many points I received. Uh, not a very good score. I probably would have had five people in poor or very poor health had uh, I taken the toll road. Um, but overall, not too shabby. But since I was a carpenter, my points are doubled and I get a very patriotic score of 1776. So, <laughs> how about that? Oh, I made the top ten list. Mr. B. Ed Tech. Alright, just barely made the top ten list. So that is the gameplay perspective of the Oregon Trail. Um, let's go ahead and back out. Let's see what happens when I end it. Oh, that takes me back. It's been a long time since I've seen a DOS prompt. All right, so um, a somewhat successful journey. I guess I did make it to the end, um, but uh, with that last little decision there at the end, I'm still, <laughs> still kind of reeling about it. But let's take a look at some of the educational benefits of the Oregon Trail. Um, first, was it project-based? I think we can definitely say yes. This is a project-based activity. We have a project that is get your team from Independence, Missouri to uh, Willamette Valley in Oregon. So I definitely think this is a kind of a neat project. And along the way, you learn about things about dysentery and things like that. I didn't know what dysentery was. And Project-based, I think we can say yes. Secondly, student-led. Um, definitely student-led. The teacher can you know, set it up any which way they want. They say grade levels 4 through 12. So I think this can be appropriate for any of those grade levels still to this day if um, you have the proper amount of setup beforehand and you have the objectives listed out beforehand. Another aspect of student-led that I didn't allude to is the fact that this lesson can be done at the student's own pace. So we have project-based, student-led, and individualized activity. Everybody has access to a device. This would fit great in a one-to-one -one environment. And overall, my rating is, um, I'll say, yes, it still can be incorporated in the curriculum if done correctly. And um, what I recommend this version, this is nostalgic for me because I remember this fondly as a child. How would a modern um, learner, how would they um, react to this? And some of the research out there suggests that sometimes the retro technology makes a comeback because of its nostalgia of, their, of the parent generation. So, like for example, right now, um, cassette tapes. I heard uh, there's a cassette tape company um, that is having their biggest year since 1969. And that is astounding to me that cassette tapes are making their comeback. This is audio cassettes. Um, these things died out because uh, portable CD players, you know, in the mid 90s, they kind of blame it or credit the movie um, Guardians of the Galaxy with bringing back this and making this more nostalgic. So I would say as long as the technology looks relevant or retro or somehow cool in that respect, I think you'll get a certain group of kids that will appreciate this but a group of kids that will not. And for that, there are actually more modern versions of this that came out over the years. You don't have to play the one from 84, the one I remember. And you can have different groups play different versions of the game um, and kind of compare, you know, how was your journey? Because in my experience, the older games were much tougher than the newer games. Well, I think that about wraps it up for this video. I think I've kind of droned on long enough. Um, once again, I'd like to thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any comments about this video or if you have future classic tech that you want me to cover, um, please do so in the comments or you can reach me through my blog or my website at mrbwebsite.com, mrbwebsite.com uh, or through the usual social media channels. 
Um, other than that, that's all I got for you. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.